Let's move into um, the first open mic bracket, which will be shared, uh, chaired rather, um, by Angela Costi. I'll just pop Angela on um, spotlight and tell you a little about Angela, although I'm sure a lot of you know her very well. She's the author of five gatherings or collections of poetry, including Honey and Salt, shortlisted for the Mary Gilmore Prize, and an embroidery of old maps and new um, from Spinifex Press, which was awarded the Book Prize for Poetry in English 2022 by the Greek Australian Cultural League. Together with nine produced plays, five commissioned and funded. She received the High Commendation for Contribution to Arts and Culture, um, the Mary Beck Award in 2021. Her poetry has been placed or shortlisted in a number of awards, including Warilla, Meniscus, Spineless Wonders, and the Joanne Burns Microlit. She won the KSP, Catherine Susanna Pritchard, Poetry Award in 2022. She is also known as Angeliki, is that how I say it, Angela? Angeliki. Angeliki, sorry. Um, right. Among the Cypriot Greek diaspora, which is her heritage. So over to you. Thank you, Angela. Thank you, Rose. Um, I'm delighted and thrilled to be and honoured uh, to be uh, uh, hosting the first bracket tonight. As I was reading through the entire list of poets, I thought, I know quite a lot of this, these poets. I know their poetry. Uh, it's a testament to Liquid Amber Press. Um, not only do we get to hear Diane Fay and Ross Gillett, but we have a high calibre poetry night. So um, each poet will give us up to four minutes of their poetic, poetic wisdom. And we're <laughs> beginning tonight with Catherine Fry. So a little bit about Catherine. <laughs> Uh, she has lived in Belmont for the past decade, during which she'd had two poetry collections published by Gin and Dara Press. The Earth Will Outshine Us is, is her second book, which was launched at the Newcastle Writers Festival in 2022. So hmm. over to Catherine. Thank you very much, Angela. I'm really grateful to be here as part of this special night. So thank you to the organisers. Uh, the title of my poem is uh, Revelations from Dudley, and uh, it's going to be published in the upcoming issue of Science Right Now, which is the brainchild of um, Jessica White and Amanda Niehaus. Uh, Dudley isn't the name of a person. It's actually the name of a suburb near Belmont in a Wobbicall country where I'm living. And... Uh, it's noted for its fossilised tree trunks on the foreshore by the ocean. And so the poem was written after an excursion um, to Dudley with a geologist who uh, explained the history of the area to the group that I joined. So Revelations from Dudley. A ribbon of morning lit glitter reaches the rocks through the sweep of sea from the horizon out near the edge of the Sydney Basin, that hole into which all manner of debris fell after the great dying. I recall the vista of blue from the jagged peak of Mount Tomary, finding islands in the sun, a ghoul's petrel flying below, and that rush of feeling, though you weren't there. Sandstone I'm sitting on now is 252 million years old. I'm learning from a geologist on the move, his arms wide with the verve of this ancient story of river energies, floodplains, and sediment brought down. Images of swamped land have inundated our screens of water draining south, no longer to forests of Glossopteris, that Gondwanan seed bearer. Now I know it took 10,000 years to form a meter of coal, dark driver of change. He's showing the group pumice from the undersea explosion only a dozen years ago, and he's reading an overhang like a book he's learnt by heart. I think of you, our different ways, as he points to cross beds and current flow, bands of varied sizes and aquifer water under pressure. 
were soon to find iron rich fossilized trunks lying willy nilly. But I'm stuck on tension between plates or any two things close, like you and me, and the stresses of our years. Scant stuff on the Earth's clock. Yet here we are by a graceful force having scaled any upheavals. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Powerful. Thank, Thank you, you Catherine. Thank you. And our next one is Irina Frolova. She's a Russian Australian writer and the current president of the Lake Macquarie branch of the Fellowship of Australian Writers. Irina's creative highlights include her first collection of poetry, Far and Wild, published by, five, by, published by Flying Island Books in 2021, and being awarded second place in the 2021 Deborah Cass Prize for Writing. Now, where are oh, there is Irina? Thank you. Over to you. Thank you, Angela. Um, hi, everyone. It's lovely to be here tonight, and it's lovely to see some familiar faces as well. Um, I'll be reading two poems from my book, Far and Wild. And the first poem is the title poem. Um, it has a word haravod in it, which is a Russian word that refers to a Slavic circular folk dance. And also this poem first appeared in Not Very Quiet. Far and Wild. I never cared for manicured lawns, trimmed hedges. It's the wilderness that makes me shiver. Tall grass dances haravod in a meadow. Wind shakes me to the core, pulls me closer to the ground, my branch ripe with fruit. Below the ocean, towards rye fields, towards daisies, below snow drifts, below valleys, my roots spread far towards the graves of my great grandparents. They carry the scent of hay, the taste of time, the sorrow of a folk song. They drink from a well of a small village. And the second poem I'd like to read tonight is a love poem of sorts uh, written on and for the Awobakal land or Lake Macquarie. Um, and the lovely Michael Leach here will help me read this poem. It's called Colors of One. Almost every night I try to simultaneously let go and gather. I walk and walk. With every step, I wipe my feet of my messy, single parent, immigrant desolation. Solitude has shaped me, painted me many colors. Some are a limbo stretching for the dark hours, days, weeks, without. Others, a rainforest. I gather my breath in tree leaves, wild flowers, clouds, the cool salty vastness of the lake. Here, all my colors make peace. If not love, safe in knowing each other a long time. Thank you very much. That was wonderful. Um, a call and response, a duet. I don't think I've ever seen that on Zoom. I'm looking forward to seeing many others like that. Uh, I think, Michael, you're in the second bracket as well. So maybe there might be something, another one that you can do with Irina, another duet. We'll see. All right, on to Gina Mercer. I think I saw Gina, uh, she's somewhere here. Gina grew up on Bunjalong country where her mother immersed her in the joy of wordplay. This gifted Gina a career working with words as writer, editor, teacher. She's published 11 books ranging from academic work to feminist fiction to elemental and eclectic poetry. Thank you, Gina, looking forward to it. Thanks, Angela. And I wanted to just thank Rose for the uh, collective noun for poets, a privilege of poets, I think you said, Rose. I hadn't heard that before, it's an interesting one. And thank you to both you and Pauline for creating this 
poetry community and the new press. I think that's a wonderful thing that you're doing. So thank you for that. I'm going to read you three short tree poems because trees are a source of great delight to me and hopefully others as well. First one's called Tristania. Climbing, my sapling limbs know the way up into the canopy, into the mother depths of this old Tristania. Bark crunch peels to dusky pink, deeply cool and smooth, the colour of beloved flesh. Shapely leaves swish secrets to one another. Creamy flowers burst their innocence into the redolent sky. sky. On a branch as wide as my waist, I stretch out on my back, absorb the choreography of limbs, leaves, clouds, birds. Or loll on my stomach, cheek pressed against silken bark, dancing wild green words in my head. Uh, this next one is a very small poem and it appears in this little book, which is a dictionary of water. And so this poem is in the form of an imagined dictionary entry for the word fruit. Small, highly coloured sacks invented by trees for the satisfaction of tongues. Mm. Global phenomenon. Water in highest state of desirability, fruit. And last one, you make a canopy. Open the morning window. Here's a tree who's made a canopy. Cool green space, all elegant brown angles and shadows, home to tiny birds. Gentle shade to shelter and foster, dapple, ground-hugging plants. 20 year, years ago, you were a mere whippet of grey-green effort. We staked and tied your tender slenderness. You flourish now into your sturdy green destiny. Prosper a rounded canopy. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. That was gorgeous. Tony Mills or Anthony Mills is next and he lives in the southern highlands of New South Wales. He spent most of his working life as a public health worker in the area of physical and mental health well-being. He now volunteers as a hospital chaplain. His first collection, Miracle of Days, was published by Ginandera Press in 2022. Welcome. Tony or Anthony, what do you prefer? Oh, you're on mute. In the bottom left-hand corner. Got there it. you go, there you go. Thank you. Yep, um, over to you. Okay. Um, I've got two poems uh, that I'd like to read. Thank you, Angela. Um, the first uh, poem was inspired by a news report um, that reported that uh, Emerald Evigenia, uh, I think that's the pronunciation, a Ukrainian sniper, had married a fellow soldier she met at the start of the Russian invasion. Uh, the bride shared pictures of her wedding on Instagram, in which she can be seen wearing a white wedding gown, holding ears of wheat in her hands, while her husband donned a military uniform with a gun. So that... Um, that news report inspired this poem called Spring Wheat. <clears throat> a thin line of light gleams from her eyes, searching the furrowed fields, sings Russian boys into her sights, her gaze brushing their cheeks. A scythe whisper cuts them the last breath. They open out like strange flowers, earth crumbling under their feet. She moves among rocks like the wind, thoughts tangled in their spinning deaths. Round face, 
hair straight as rain, her hands broadened by use. The long plains of sunflowers and wheat shake like a flag, sharp crystal ring of rifles, bodies harvested pile up like sheaves. The sun keeps faith, morning sky a vast skull. Hardly maintaining their strength, soldiers need sleep from their eyes. A blown church, cradles ruined stork nests. Among its smoking walls, the fragrance of bread. The next um, poem is called Language Disorder, and it's for JD. A child rails against an alphabet that denies him words. The world torn away by an invisible hand, his days wandering at incomprehensible borders. Brittle sound trolls through morning's fast mouth, babbling tongues, infinite misunderstandings. Embattled by naming the world, he sinks within a labyrinth a confusion of circles, becomes thick pelted, the colour of shame. Strange to himself, hunts for invention. At the far end of abandonment, finds home in the latitude of ordinary things dense with light erupting from his canvas. A bowl with emerald apples holding all shades of green. In the stillness of himself, crosses borders without moving. Wordless pulse thrumming body. Life weightless with presence. As when first rain falls on a child's uplifted face. Thank you. Thank you. Visual and visceral. Thank you so much, Tony. Um, now the next one, I don't think many of us know this person, but um, we will see. Um, she, as well as being the founding editor at Liquid Amber Press, Rose Lucas is a poet in Nam on Wurundjeri country and an academic at Victoria University. She's the author of four poetry collections, including Even in the Dark, which won the Mary Gilmore Award, and her most recent title is Increments of the Everyday, a fantastic book, I must say, published by Puncher and Watman in 2022. She has also been involved in several ekphrastic projects with visual artist Sharon Monagall, together with colleague Anne Carson and last year's winner, Renee Petit Ship. Rose is currently judging the 2023 Liquid Amber Poetry Prize. Her forthcoming collection is titled Remarkable as Breathing and is out next year. Over to Rose. Thank you, Angela. Fantastic. And um, thank you very much for having me. Um, I'm going to read a couple of ekphrastic poems tonight um, that are from uh, Increments of the Everyday. Uh, the first poem, um, and I'll show, I'll show you the image in a tick. Um, the first poem is uh, by a, an artist called Gertrude Cowders, uh, who was a Czech uh, Jewish artist who was uh, murdered by the Nazis in a concentration camp in, in 1942. But before that, she um, had the, the foresight or the foreboding or whatever to um, put her, her entire oeuvre of painting into the um, walls of a, a friend's house that was being constructed in Prague. Um, so it was, you know, then um, put into the walls and wasn't actually discovered amazingly until 2018 um, when, you know, the house was being demolished. So um, it's an amazing image of, of a whole body of, of painting uh, that spent that period of time um, hidden away. Um, so let me just I'll show you one of the, the very striking images um, from that. I'll just pop it into the slide so it shows, so you can see it a little bit easier. Um, you know, so you can see, um, you can see. Okay, so this poem, um, which is based on, on that story and these set of images is called Vault. 
I leave my heart inside these walls where lathes are being nailed together, cross-hatched tapestries of shape embedded inside the hopeful substance of this emerging house that says at least a kind of permanence, a shelter in this rising cacophony. I trust to a plaster that smooths and joins and makes a smiling face to shield a hidden world of dust. It's quiet and coiled spiders where sunlight never comes and seasons roll on by. I must learn to imagine this place that holds for now all the colours I have seen and thought about the broad swathe, the softness of pink and yellow, lights on light on naked skin, the delicacy of nipple. Each canvas folded carefully into silence, sealed and alive in this airless space, swirl of colour and form, boldness of eyebrow, holding them safe my watching eyes, my labours of pencil and brush and palette, tracing the lines of the everyday or the expressions that flicker transient across a human face. This world I love inside my eyes, these pages of my pounding, tearing life. Okay, and I'll just move the slide on to a very different kind of scene. This is, um, here we are jumping to Caravaggio, 1608. Um, and here is an image of St. Jerome translating the Bible into Latin, of course. Surrounded by canvas black, subsiding or emerging, he is wrapped at his task. Each muscle is focused upon the weighty tome, center of his life's gravity. Illumination inscribed within its crinkled pages, heavy and textured beneath his work-worn fingers. Reading then Writing at the same time, his arm extends to a page still awash in opacity. Dull metal to be transformed into glimmerings of gold, old meanings laboured, bursting into new. His thinking head inclined, engrossed, his old man's body a machine to drive the quill to fly its arrow true pure channel of human breath rendering spirit into flesh of mortal words while death ever the faithful companion keeps close watch bald pate glinting in the same small pool of jaundiced light, momentary among shadow. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Work. Let's go on to Moya Costello. Moya has five books, one of which is her first poem collected, a collection titled Pressed Specimens, Prose Poems from the Medicinal Plant Herbarium Southern Cross University published by Bear Boer Press. It was highly commended in the Anne Elder Award 2022 and she's reading from it tonight. It's wonderful to see you Moya. So hello, I'm reading from the lands of the Panalapana peoples on the north central coast of Lurturita. Um, thank you to Liquid Amber Press and Diane for hosting an open mic on this occasion. I looked for a phrase uh, in Diane's poems 
that I could reference, and this is it, from rain in its own season. And the phrase is the pale grass. My prose poem is written with Lachna grostis filiformis poaceae, or blown grass, fairy grass. Fine, pale, palea, lime green, mellow yellow, fishing line, fine, minutely membranous, fine, fine, fishing line thin, straw feathered, feathered sheathed, spike seeded, blade striped, shallowy grooved, blown, wind, grass, hairy, woolly grass, thread shaped, pattern embroidered, fine, fine, entangled panicle, spreading, divaricated abscission in wind blow, independently, assertively, not shy, caring for. Thank you. That's wonderful, Moya, and I love your background. Um, I'd love to hear more, actually. Um, now, True Dowling, True S. Dowling, is a Bendigo poet, performer, editor, and teacher. Her poems have been read, awarded, or published in Australia, Ireland, UK, and USA. Books include Memoirs of a Consenting Victim, 2011, and Butcher Baker, His Story Maker, 2021. Over to you, True. Thanks, Angela. Um, sorry, Alana, I wish we could hear you. It started off beautifully. <laughs> um, I have two poems for you tonight. The first is for a dear friend, and it's called Autumn as Metaphor. I sit in the car park after scribbling your card. On the cover, rainbow angles frame three autumn leaves suspended in white space, red, brown, yellow. Across the park, the pampas grass feathers dusk. Sunlight plays upon its wings, my chest, yellow, brown, red. In the foreground, the grass is impossible lime, a carpet of soft hope cut through with liquid amber shadows, red, brown, yellow. Fire tips its slanting shade. As my pen falters, the heart takes over, inks the blank with tears for you, your beloved's face, yellow, brown. Red your scramble of lips on lips, hands on his heart, his eyes wide to the morning sky, an impossible blue, a blink in the blinding light, red, if brown, yellow. You found him there in the garden, lost him among the succulents and banksias, while the roses glared yellow, brown, red. We are dying from the time we are born. The sun greens as it dries, and we strive, and we drive ourselves outside in to make sense of this red, brown, yellow life falling away as we grow into it death's insidious thread holding us together, ripping us apart. That's a wonderful poem. Um, very hard to read. <laughs> yeah, it's very hard to, it's wonderful, but it's very sad and it, um, it reminds me of my own grief too. So it's wonderful mm -hmm. that you've mm -hmm. been able to write it. Um, our final poet. Sorry, I just bracket. had one more. Have I got? Oh, one? sorry. Yes, Is you right? have. You no, certainly have. You. If I haven't, I won't mind. I don't mind. No, no, you do, True. Sorry. Thank you. That's all right. Um, this one is a little more of a positive note. It's called Brooke Preen, and it's only a small one. Preen, um, and in parentheses, black swan tails. Uh, and I'd like to just impromptuly uh, dedicate this one to you, Michael. 
Lake Edge in a reed fringed pocket. Hullabaloo. His neck bends serpentine. Winds flap like fingers flick water. Spread feathers rise in angelic pose, praising the sun's warmth, a breath of breeze. Muscular fuss lifts body above plimsoll line as if suspended in a few swift moves. In moments, he exerts to extend himself, drying after the monk industry of preen. He settles, repeats clean. Bill probes beneath a wing, belly, over back, tail, smoothing from quill to flayed tip, sectioned with a hairdresser's finesse, a grandfather's careful comb over. White fluffs out from ebony's sheen, no sound but water wings spit and riffle till the next rising. And that it's a um, concrete poem, so I don't know if you can see it or not. Anyway, thank you. Yes, we can see it. It's beautiful. Thank you, True. Thank you. Thank you. Our final poet in this bracket is Anne Elvey. Anne is a poet, editor, and researcher living and working on Boonwurrung country in Seaford, Victoria. Her most recent poetry collection is Leaf with Liquid Amber Press. Other recent publications include Obligations of Voice with Recent Work Press 2021 and Cloud Climbers Declarations Through Images and Words for a Just and Ecologically Sustainable Peace with Palava Press 2021. Over to you, Anne. Thank you, Angela. Um, yes, so as Angela mentioned, um, I'm here tonight on Boonwurrung country um, in Seaford. Um, I have two poems, um, fairly recent ones that have actually been workshopped with some of the people who are here tonight. So um, the first is called Heart to Leaf. And um, just a couple of notes, um, when it refers to the colony, that is the colony um, that is the ongoing colony called Australia. Um, and um, hardheads are a kind of duck. Probably most people know that, but I thought I'd mention it. Um, Heart to Leaf, Boonwurrung Country, Frankston Reservoir and Frankston Nature Conservation Reserve, May 2023. Small hands of tea tree, grey greening. I breathe them in the almost rain. Wind picks up, moistens my face. My body keeps this footfall alive like leaf, steady. My skin is a being immersed, arriving porous, soul open to lungs verdure, while invasions continue. Plants flesh attaches to thin twigs, to air, to some tender spirit that inhabits me, neither of us colonizing the other though the impact is now. The colony places us together in bush fused with plantation and care beside another stemmed waterway here, home to hardheads and frogs. The track we took is named for kookaburras. I hear one as we approach the car, freshened by stride and gust, willing to be unentitled. And the second poem, um, To the Willmaker of Branching Breath. Leave me the hospitality of words, how a good sentence can selve, like an instrument's compassion, strum tremor of line, fingers pulse on wood, or mallet to timpani, how they ground an orchestra with surprising character, warm and low, a capacity to let be when voice arrives, diaphragm, throat, ear, flowing like freedom, lungs expanded. How then I'll forget hurt, forgive what's unintended, give to quiet the wholeness we're gravitating towards, as day lets go and wind plays through night's yard, unsettled soothing. Thank you.
so many beautiful lines to keep and remember. And thank you. Thank you to all of the poets in the first bracket. And thank you for having me. Over to Rose. Well, so before we move on, thank you very much, Angela. It's really wonderful to have you come in. You've got such a, a lovely, welcoming way, um, you know, and I'm sure I'm sure the readers really appreciate that. So thank you so much for, for being a host tonight.